If you have been dealing with arthritis pain, then you're probably looking for other alternative solutions to manage that pain than just taking over-the-counter or even prescription medication. If that sounds familiar, then this video is for you. I am here to answer that question, so let's just get started. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Shockley, doctor of cause, chiropractic, board certified in sports medicine, and specialized in clinical nutrition. In this video, we are gonna be going over the best foods to be consuming on a regular basis if you wanna use diet as a way for decreasing that arthritis pain. Honestly, this is way more effective than you think, so I strongly encourage you to try it out. Then we'll cover the common mistakes you're unknowingly making because you're keeping these types of health foods in your diet. And finally, I will be sharing with you a little known method for ending arthritis pain once and for all. Trust me, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this one. Let's dive right on in. What are the best foods for you to be consuming to try to naturally reduce that arthritic pain? Well, there's a list of them, so why don't we get started? The first food to start incorporating into your diet on a regular basis would be fatty fish. Now, these fish include your salmon, your mackerel, sardines, trout, not your swordfish, okay? Not mahi-mahi, not orange roughy, but salmon, mackerel, sardines, trout. One of the main reasons why these fatty fish are really rich in what's known as omega-3 fatty acids. And those omega-3 fatty acids are extremely good at reducing inflammation, which when you're dealing with pain, it is the result of inflammation, which is like fire in your body, like running rampant. So if you start consuming more of these fatty fish that contain omega-3 fatty acids, think of that as like the firemen showing up with their hoses loaded and locked and ready to put the fires out using those omega-3s. So add in more salmon, make sure it's wild caught, add in mackerel, sardines, you know, and trout. Fresh caught would be like absolutely the best. Another, this is more of a, like a spice or a seasoning into your food that you can incorporate is garlic. Now, garlic is touted for many different health benefits. So if you don't have an aversion to garlic or you don't seem to react to garlic in any way, shape, or form, then garlic is something you should definitely incorporate into your diet on a very frequent basis. We know it's fantastic for heart health, but one of the things as it pertains to arthritis is that it also has properties about it that are anti-inflammatory. This is going to be the theme of this whole entire section. We're incorporating foods in that reduce inflammation and garlic is definitely one of those. So add garlic to anything and everything that you possibly can, um, but go easy if you're not used to eating a lot of garlic all at once because it can upset your, your gut a little bit, okay? So start slow, but it, start incorporating it into more of your cooking, you know, or you can even do where you're doing garlic infused olive oil we're going to talk about it in a second, to add more health benefits in. That way, that's maybe not as potent as just sauteing your vegetables in some minced fresh garlic. Another more seasoning that is extremely good at reducing inflammation is ginger. You know that probably more specifically for helping with upset stomachs, but ginger itself is very rich in antioxidants, which help clean up all the bad guys that are part of what's provoking the inflammation and the pain that you're experiencing. Ginger also has anti-inflammatory properties as well. My son specifically, it really, I didn't know my son who's nine years old was gonna turn into a tea connoisseur, but his favorite tea to drink, no matter if it's summer, winter, or you know whatever the season may be, is ginger tea. And he will drink just ginger tea on its own, but occasionally I will add in a spot of local honey, to just give them some other benefits from local honey itself. So ginger tea is a great way that you could start consuming more ginger in your life, but this is a, another unique seasoning you can incorporate into your foods. You can do it in salads, more with fresh ginger. I don't encourage eating sushi, but make sure if you are that you're using ginger because it actually helps with some of the parasites you're being exposed to. But you can get fresh ginger or pickled ginger and just eat that on its own or add it into soups, you know, other types of cooking, sauteing vegetables. There are many different ways to start incorporating ginger into your life. So do that and you can start reaping its benefits as well. Now, I'm a big fan of this next one. Um, and I believe it's not really a secret, 
for being so good at reducing inflammation and helping calm things down. It, I like to explain this vegetable, there's a first hint, is it's more like, if you look at it, it almost looks like a brush. And if you think about that as going through the body and just kind of cleaning up the junk, maybe gives you a little bit different visual. We are talking about broccoli. Now, broccoli has amazing health benefits to it. It contains sephorophane, which is huge for reducing, you know, free radicals and all of this inflammation that's running rampant in your body right now. Um, it also doesn't contain hardly any sugars, which we'll get into here in a little bit as well of things that you may not want to be consuming. Okay. Broccoli is in the cruciferous family. And honestly, broccoli always gets like the star of the show. The cruciferous vegetables in their own right, which would be your cabbage, your kohlrabi, cauliflower, all of those guys are really good for reducing inflammation, just helping to reduce those aches and pains you're feeling associated with arthritis. Okay. Another food you could start snacking on would be walnuts. Walnuts specifically because they contain a high amount of those omega-3 fatty acids, but even pecans and almonds, some of your other nuts and seeds, you can incorporate in for you know, like your afternoon snack or sprinkle them on top of salads or garnish them, you know, like toast them just a smidge, put them over your vegetables just for a little added boost of those omega-3 fatty acids, which again are extremely good at reducing inflammation. And just in case you didn't know, Arthritis means, so arthur is the joint, ritis or itis means inflammation. So arthritis specifically means inflammation within your joints. So all the foods we're talking about, as I mentioned, reduce inflammation, thereby help you eat your way to less pain. And we haven't mentioned a ton about fruits, but there are some fruits that are great for reducing inflammation. But when it comes to fruit, we need to be a little bit careful at how much we're consuming because they contain a lot of natural sugars, which again, you're gonna find out shortly, sugar is something that works great for starting fires or increasing inflammation. So use these sparingly. Of all the fruits, berries are known for being the best at helping with reducing inflammation and partly they've got major antioxidants. So again, eating up or neutralizing those free radicals which cause cell damage, which ultimately leads to inflammation, okay? but when it comes to fruit, know what a serving size is. I mean, a cup, if you use that as a serving size, you're consuming way too many blueberries if you're eating a cup at a time, okay? It's more like a half cup to a quarter cup. So know your serving size and then stick to just a serving a day. And if you want an extra bonus when it comes to fruit, have it as like your dessert. Have it late in the day because when you put fruit in late in the day, it actually helps you release something known as tryptophan which gets its claim and fame from Turkey at Thanksgiving. Tryptophan helps you fall asleep. So if you need help falling asleep, there's a bonus. Eat your berries at the end of the day. You'll reduce aches and pains, but you'll also help yourself sleep even more soundly at night. Now, next on my list is spinach. And spinach, again, contains a lot of antioxidants that work well for helping the body decrease inflammation. And one reason why I like spinach is because if you're not the biggest fan of vegetables, spinach is one that you can kind of sneak in to dishes and not notice, you know, real well. It doesn't have a very prominent taste. I drink smoothies, so I will have my serving of fruit at the end of the day in a smoothie most of the time. And that smoothie is loaded with spinach and kale, which is also one of those cruciferous guys that works well at reducing inflammation. And then I throw a bunch of other nutrition in there too, just to really like feed the body as much nutrients as I can. Um, and it's easy for me during the work week to do that. I also like my son eats uh, pasture raised, you know, cage free and raised the way God intended them, chicken eggs on a fairly frequent basis. He's also consumed duck and turkey eggs too, which have a lot of nutrient value, just like our chicken eggs do. And he's not the biggest fan when I do this. But I'll put spinach in his eggs because it's another way that I can get more of this into his system that I know is so good for him for a multitude of reasons. And he doesn't complain because he really doesn't taste it. It's more he can see it. But like, let's say you don't have an issue with nightshades. So like tomatoes would be a nightshade. And there are a lot of people who can have issues with that. And in fact, if you go out and you research, there are different experts out there saying that nightshades 
might be a group of foods that if you're dealing with arthritis, you don't want to consume. But let's just say you don't have issues with tomatoes and you make your homemade, you know, spaghetti sauce from scratch. You could always puree up, puree up some spinach and put it in there and nobody would have any idea that you just now like bonus nutrients into your spaghetti sauce by adding that in. So eat more spinach. I don't care if you eat it raw or if you saute it or if you throw it in a smoothie, like that's a super easy way to get more spinach into your life. Just eat more spinach. It's a great way to get more antioxidants into your system and start putting out those fires associated with arthritis. An oil that I've already mentioned that's really good for helping with inflammation um, associated with arthritis pain specifically is olive oil. Now, I prefer extra virgin olive oil, but here's the thing you need to know about olive oil. We've been taught for years now that this is the safe, healthy alternative for cooking instead of using margarine or butter or other saturated fats that we've been told clog our, our arteries, which first of all is not true. And secondly, also is not the right way to be using olive oil. What we've realized is that olive oil breaks down when you start heating it above even 250 degrees. It does not have a high enough flash heat temperature to actually cook with it. So I use my extra virgin olive oil as my base for my salad dressings, or I will roast up a bunch of vegetables on, you know, unbleached parchment paper in the oven, and then I'll drizzle olive oil over the top of them once they're done being cooked. Um, and that works really well. You can drizzle olive oil on anything once it's already cooked. You won't actually create this reaction, which is essentially the olive oil breaks down and all of the good you could have gotten from it is now lost because it's broken down. And it's actually become more like rancid oil that is introducing free radicals into your body, which are those guys that are the bad guys that break down and cause self damage, which provokes inflammation. So please do not cook with olive oil. You are perfectly safe and it is healthy to use grass fed butter or ghee if you don't tolerate dairy very well, but you still prefer the taste of butter. Okay, you won't react to the ghee generally. You can use coconut oil. Avocado oil. If you don't want something to actually have a lot of flavor of the oil itself, avocado is a great alternative oil for to use. And it is one you can saute in, you can do some roasting of because it has a higher flash heat temperature. Those are the main oils that we have in our household. Really, it's the only oils that I purchase because they're the ones that we know are safe and actually healthy for us to use. All of those, by the way, can also reduce inflammation. So you don't just have to use the olive oil, use more healthy fats. That will help put out the fires and reduce the inflammation that you're dealing with right now because of arthritis. Now, before I get into the most common mistake you're unknowingly making because you're consuming these healthy foods, I just want to take a moment and remind you to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notifications on. I am producing content for you, constantly providing value and teaching you guys how to take back control of your health safely through natural means, you name it because you actually have the power to do that. So just click the subscribe button, turn the notifications on, hit the like button while you're down there, and you will not miss out on a future episode. I appreciate it. What is this most common mistake you are more than likely unknowingly making because you're eating these healthy foods? Well, this brings up the topic of eating grains. Now, there's a lot of controversy around this. There's a lot of controversy already around gluten and is it bad or is it good for you? But this gets into all of the grains, okay? It puts them all on the table. We've been taught that whole grains are really good for us. We've been taught that they help reduce cholesterol and they protect your heart. And eating whole grains provides a lot more nutrients, obviously, than if you were consuming the refined grain version. But what people are not really telling you is that grains are really good at creating inflammation in the body. Now, bear with me. Don't freak out, okay? I need to explain the why behind this. This is going to get a little technical, but I promise it will make sense as we go along here. This has probably been a couple of decades ago where initially this concept of glycemic index came online and it was more to do with diabetes. If you've heard about that, comment down below. I'm curious. Glycemic index, okay? So in case you haven't heard about the glycemic index, what you need to know about it is it is a number that is given to a food and it's based on how high does that food spike your blood sugar? This is why it was associated with diabetes, okay? Now, sugar itself, so straight table sugar, 
has a glycemic index around 68. The further away you get from zero, the higher the glycemic index food, the more stressful it is on, you know, spiking blood sugar. And ultimately, the key here, what you need to know is when we are spiking blood sugar, and if we keep blood sugar spiked high for long periods of time, we are creating inflammation in our body. Okay, so higher glycemic index foods are also, the way you could translate this, are foods that promote inflammation or turn the body on fire when you consume them. Sugar comes in at about a 68. That's pretty high. Closer we get to 100, the more problematic it is. Only foods that are higher than sugar itself are unfortunately all of our grains. Okay, now this is not a gluten or non gluten debate. What you need to know about grains is the grains that actually contain gluten are next on the chopping block. They come in at around 70 to 72. The grains that are higher than that are all the gluten-free containing grains, which might be why if you've known anybody who's ever cut gluten out and they just replaced everything with gluten-free options, that they may have ended up with more health problems. Gluten-free does not mean healthy, okay? But again, this is not a gluten debate. So ultimately, we have to have another conversation about this topic. If grains have a higher glycemic index than sugar itself, they all create inflammation. But there's more to the story. We've been taught whole grains are better for us. Now, as far as nutrient density goes, that is a true statement because the components of the grain that contain all of the vitamins and the minerals and that that you would get by consuming them get stripped away in the refining process. So whole wheat bread does contain more nutrient density than white bread. But there's another factor associated with glycemic index and it's known as glycemic load. The glycemic load is not how high does it go, like not how high does your blood sugar get spiked, but how long does it stay spiked? And who do you think is more problematic here? It's whole grains. Whole grains will not spike blood sugar quite as high, but it's almost the same, as the refined grain, but they take a longer time to process and to digest, so they keep your blood sugar spiked high for longer. Which again, I was just saying, like, the higher your blood sugar goes and the longer you keep your blood sugar elevated like that, it is stressful on the body and it causes inflammation. And right now what we're trying to do is get rid of inflammation in your body because that's part why you have pain in your joints. It's because of inflammation. So grains are something to modify. We've been taught for forever now that we need to have grains at every single meal. And there's a huge group of us that are on a completely different page that say, no, actually it's really detrimental to our health. And it's not just about inflammation, it's brain health, it's heart health, it's digestive system, it's diabetes, it's body composition. Everything about the way a human body works does not work with high levels of inflammation, okay? Which does not work well when we're being told to consume high level sprays, okay? They're not as healthy for us as what we've been led to believe, unfortunately. If you're freaking out at me, start with baby steps. If you eat grains at every single meal, start with taking grains away from one meal. We don't ever eat bread in our house. We don't eat crackers. We don't eat pasta. We eat everything. Like for pasta, we would spiralize zucchini. We eat vegetable noodles, okay? Bread-wise, we've come up with different keto or paleo options that work, or we just don't eat it. I grew up long before this whole grain-free movement happened, always eating hamburgers without a bun. And believe me, it's really actually good. You don't miss it after a while. So look for ways that you can start to cut that out and start gradually if this is really daunting to you. And reach out to me if you have questions of like, what can I use as a swap here? I am well-versed in this. I've lived this way since I was 15 years old. It was a few different decades ago. So I can help you with this and I can help you find things that do not taste like cardboard or feel like cardboard for consuming. Okay. Along these lines of other things you shouldn't be consuming are sugars. Now I think most of us know sugar is not good for us, but the reason why I want to talk about this now is because it gets slipped into foods without our awareness about it. So there's a few things you need to know when you're at the grocery store. First of all, if you want to save yourself a lot of time and effort and headache, shop in the perimeter minus the bakery. Okay. The perimeter is where you find your meat section and your produce. If you live in those sections, you'll do a lot better job. 
The only aisle that I suggest you enter into is the one where you have your fats and your oils. That way you can get your coconut oil, your avocado oil, your extra virgin olive oil. You know, in the perimeter, you'll also find grass-fed butter. Put those in to the cart. That's fine. Otherwise, every other aisle that's there, you have to be careful when you're getting foods that are pre-packaged or come in a container. They've been compromised in some way, shape, or form. And oftentimes, you will find sugar in the most bizarre places. You know, if you're in the meat department and you're getting, you know, breakfast seeds or lunch meats or whatever, which we don't eat a lot of, look to see if they've had sugar added to them because oftentimes they have, unless you're getting it from the butcher himself and it isn't anything that they've seasoned or done anything to, you still have to have some awareness of have they slipped sugar in. When you're in the dairy section, if you're a big fan of yogurt, you need to be eating the full fat version of the yogurt and try to stare clear from the yogurts that have actually had fruit added to them because you're going to be consuming a lot more sugar. It's something to know fat free or low fat versus the full fat version has a lot more sugar in it. Compare them side by side. You will be blown away at how much sugar the low fat, no fat has. They have to do something to try to make it taste good. A lot of flavor comes from the fat. And oftentimes the fat that they're getting rid of is not the fat that's bad for you. So work on reducing grains, work on reducing sugar. Sugar is the fire starter, okay? And that goes for fruits as well, as I was already mentioning. You only want to have a serving, not servings every single like meal either, a serving per day with fruit because they just contain so many natural occurring sugars. It wasn't something we were intended to consume all day long, every single day, every single day of the year either. Okay. So work to reduce those foods that we've been taught are healthy for us. And you will also see that your inflammation drops dramatically. Now I'm curious, did you know that those foods could be part of what's amplifying or triggering or contributing to your arthritis pain? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm super curious to know your thoughts about this. I mentioned there's a little known method for actually resolving arthritis pain. Would you like to hear about that one? Okay, here's the thing. If we're not testing, we're guessing. This is one of my favorite phrases to say in my, in my office here, locally in Colorado, but with all of my patients and in my platforms that I have. And it's true. Generally speaking, arthritis is not the result of getting old. That's what we all associate it with. No. There's more reason to it than just that. It's more reason than, oh, childhood has finally caught up with me. Hear me out on this one. Your body, if it's not working at an optimal level and all of its demand, its nutrient demands are not being satisfied, it will sacrifice certain tissues within its body to reprioritize those nutrients, or I call them assets, to other tissues that are more important for survival. Let's play a little game. Okay. And Follow along, comment down in the comments what your answer is. I would love to know kind of what your thought process is on this as well. Let's just say nutrient demands of the body are not being satisfied. You know, you're not getting enough into your diet or maybe something's not working right that you're not absorbing the nutrients that you're putting in at the levels that you should be. So what do you think your body would sacrifice first? Your hair, skin, and nails or your liver? Go ahead, type down in the comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Hair, skin, and nails, are they going to go first or your liver? I'll give you the answer here in a second. Different set of tissues. What do you think your body would sacrifice first? Your joints, your muscles, bones, connective tissue, or your liver? Go ahead, write those comments down below. So muscles, joints, connective tissue, cartilage, bone. Or your liver. And the last one I'm going to ask you is if your body had to for survival, would your body break down or sacrifice hormones first or your liver first? Now, if you guys said that the body would save the liver, it would sacrifice these other tissues, you are 100% spot on. If you didn't, that's okay because this is a very different concept that nobody talks about. And let me tell you, to be real clear, it's not just about your liver. It's about your organ systems. So our organ systems are what keep us alive, right? If their demands, nutrient demands, are not being satisfied, 
and we're not getting enough in through our diet, then they are going to break down hair, skin, and nails, muscle, bones, joints, connective tissue, and hormones to take nutrients from those tissues to give to the organs so the organs can function at a higher level. That's what keeps us surviving. So why am I sharing this with you? Generally speaking, when somebody comes to me and they're having an issue with bone, they're having an issue with joint. I mean, I'm a chiropractor, so I see this all the time, right? They're having an issue with their muscular, uh, muscular system. If it's something that's chronic, it's ongoing, long lasting, they've tried all kinds of different therapies, whether it's over the counter prescriptions, it's PT, it's injections, it's, you know, dry needling, cupping, even chiropractic, massage, you name it. If they've tried those things and this is a chronic issue that maybe they get temporary relief at best and it's not resolving, I am in the thought process that, oh, this is not just something you live with for the rest of your life. Okay, it's like, oh, this is just the way it is. I've just gotten older. Life caught up with me. I hear this all the time, right? I'm sure you've even felt that way before. What I know is it's an indication that there's a bigger problem beneath the surface. And the only true way to know what is the bigger problem is to be able to evaluate, test thoroughly the whole entire body all at once. And let me tell you, because of how the standard of care works, your medical doctor is not being able to do that for you. So if you really want to end arthritis pain, you have to be able to look at you as a whole and figure out what is the underlying cause of the issue. Now, there's a lot of lifestyle factors that play into this, not drinking enough water, not eating the right foods, you know, not getting enough foods in that actually help reduce inflammation. You know, sleep can play into this exercise as well. If you work on all of those and you get great results, awesome, then it was how you were living that's beating you up. But if you are living impeccably in all areas already and nothing's changing or it's temporary at best. And generally speaking, there's something else going on beneath the surface and you need to investigate. So if you're not testing, you're guessing. If you have questions on that, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to help you from wherever you're at. I can do that. It's not an issue. But the first thing's first. If you're still sitting here going like, okay, Kelly, this is supposed to be like, how do I eat for arthritis? And it's really confusing. In fact, I just had a gentleman in my office this past week who is dealing with arthritis. And the doctors have told him like, hey, you're going to probably have to have hip replacements and knee replacements. And he doesn't want to go down that road at all. He has seen surgeries go wrong. And yeah, there's a lot that go right, but he's also seen them gone wrong. So he's trying to do everything in his power to avoid that, or at least push it off as far as he can into the future so that he doesn't have to do that now and look at potentially having to need a second replacement done because they only last for so long. So he was looking into what can I eat? I know there's a lot I can do dietary wise. He said, there's conflicting information everywhere. So I laid it out for him very clearly, like, hey, start with this and let's see how you respond. So I want to do the same for you as well. If you look down in the description below the video, just click that description box so it expands. You will see in there access to a free full body reset meal plan. This gives you the layout, the groundwork of here's what this looks like when you actually put it into motion of eating to reduce inflammation. I've included really easy, quick recipes for you. I have included actually kind of what a meal plan could look like for you with keeping in mind that people are busy and nobody wants to cook every day. Cause I know I don't have time to do that. I wouldn't mind doing it, but no, I don't have time to do that. So this meal plan is actually really effective for people who are busy or people who do not really enjoy cooking, but know that they really need to, if they want to be healthier. And then, like I said, there's seven different, like, it's seven days of meal plans and all the recipes included. And I put your grocery list in there for you as well, just to help life out. So you can either check the box off on Instacart. You can go to the grocery store yourself and you won't miss out, you know, figure out what you already have at your house and then see what's left and you'll be good to go. You'll start eating your way to less arthritis pain. I hope today's video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you on a future one. Remember, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, send this video to your friends who are also dealing with arthritis so we can help as many people possible be able to live a, a higher quality of life without all the aches and pains. We'll see you on the next one. God bless.